So in this video, I want to give a brief introduction to the Jacobian of a transformation, and then I'm going to refer you guys to some Khan Academy videos that have very, very nice uh, animations. They're done by a guy named Grant Sanderson, who runs a YouTube channel called Three Blue, One Brown, and I'm sure I'll be referring you guys to him frequently throughout the next few weeks. Um, but let's just try to uh, get an idea of this first before I send you over to those guys. So the idea here is that I've drawn, I've drawn a couple of shapes on here. We've got a transformation which, which takes points in the UV plane to points in the XY plane. So remember we can write this as XY equals T of UV. But in reality what we're really concerned about is that we've got these two functions. X is a function of U and V and Y is a function of U and V as well. Okay, and the transformation maps points in the UV plane, say this one, to points in the XY plane, say this one, and it maps little little rectangles that are, say, attached to the point in the UV plane, so call this one P, and this one T of P. It maps them to, potentially, depending on what the function does, the transformation does, it potentially maps them to much different shapes in the XY plane. Okay, and if we're gonna try to integrate um, over these spaces, we need to know, the, the major question we need to know is how is the area in the UV plane? So just assume this is a little uh, rectangle, say, whose side edges are one unit, okay? And so I don't mean that this coordinate here is one, I mean that the length is one, okay? So this is a little one by one square in the UV plane, and we want to know what, what's the area of the shape that that maps to in the XY plane. Well, based on the picture I've drawn, the shape in the XY plane is very nonlinear. And so the first thing to do is to try to approximate this shape by something that is linear. And the best way to do that is to use the derivatives or the tangent lines to each of these edges. So let's say there's one edge, and here's a tangent to the other edge. And then we can just kind of complete the little parallelogram, assume this is parallel, as you know I can't draw too well, but complete the little parallelogram that's built out of the tangent lines to the edges of uh, the shape here um, at the point P. All right, and again, the question over here is what's the area in the XY plane? And really the, que the main question we wanna know is how are these things related to each other? And the thing that relates them is the Jacobian. Okay, and so here's what we're going to do. Basically, the edges of, of this thing can be described by the derivatives. We've got two functions that are each functions of two variables. So we can take the partial derivatives of all of these, and we can write down something called the Jacobian matrix. So we'll call this J as a function of U and V. And so these variables are called X and Y. They each depend on U and V. So the Jacobian matrix is sometimes written in derivative notation as the partial of xy with respect to the partial of u and v. Okay, and now notice x and y are both functions of u and v and so it makes sense to call this whole thing a function of u and v. And those are the variables, the independent variables in this Jacobian matrix. But the matrix is going to be a matrix that's built out of partial derivatives. Okay, and so we'll just write it out here, but this is the matrix is going to be dx by du and dx, sorry, dy by du in the first column. It's both of the partial derivatives with respect to the u direction in our uv space up here. And then the second column is going to be dx by dv and dy by dv. And those correspond to the partial derivatives of our component functions with respect to the v direction in our domain space. Okay? And so, if we just pick out these vectors, so the columns now, you, we've been doing, most of our vector work has been done, let's call this V with a hat, most of our vector work has been done in, in rows in this chapter, or this class, but this vector V with a hat, this corresponds to this edge right here, um, and the vector, let's call this, say, W with a hat, that corresponds to this vector right here, and we can compute the the area of the little parallelogram that these two vectors span by using some linear algebra. Okay, but the idea is that we can build this parallelogram out of the derivatives of uh, x and y with respect to u and v. And of course, 
For this to make any sense, we have to be working at this point here that uh, we've chosen and then I haven't really talked about. But what you, what you actually do is you evaluate uh, each of these four functions here at the point P. Okay, and so if you do that, then this just becomes a matrix full of numbers, two, a two by two matrix full of numbers. All right, and the lectures, the videos by uh, Khan Academy will make that very clear. All right, so I need a little more space here, but we just wrote down that our Jacobian matrix at every point is given by these partial derivatives, dx du and dy du in the first column, dx dv and dy dv in the second column, okay? And then we want to try to find, by the way, I, we should call this j with a hat um, because j is going to be something else in our text, uh, but j with a hat. So we're now going to want to try to use this matrix to build a function that will give us the area at, at every point of the little parallelogram in the xy space. And the way that that can be done is by taking what's called a, a determinant. So the determinant of this matrix um, is just kind of a crisscross product. All right, we multiply the two diagonals and then we subtract them. And so the Jacobian determinant, this is what our book just calls the Jacobian. So I'll write this out, the Jacobian of that transformation t, t of uv, is the function. This is just a function now. So it's not going to be a matrix, but it's a function. So for any input point, um, it's going to give us out um, a, a number now, but it's a function. And it's given by j of uv is the determinant. So it's equal to the determinant of j hat which is, like I said, this crisscross product. So you multiply these together, dx by du times dy by dv, and then subtract the product dx by dv times dy by du. Okay, and so this is the Jacobian. And so it turns out that um, if, by the way, this, remember uh, the notation for this, so another notation for the determinant is to put what look like absolute value bars, but vertical bars around the notation for the matrix. So this is d by dx, dxy by duv in the partial derivative notation with these vertical bars. That means determinant, so this is always going to be a function. This is our function j, and so what we now learn is that the area in the xy plane is equal to this this factor right here this Jacobian tells us how to scale the area when we pull it back to the uv plane so this is going to be equal to j of uv times the area in the uv plane All right or in general dx by dy is equal to this Jacobian function times du dv and I think the reason that we like this notation so much as mathematicians is that you can kind of see uh, there's like a chain rule going on here, right? But there's multiple variables. The chain rule is obviously more complicated. Um, and so this is the Jacobian.